As someone who attended summer camps throughout my childhood, I was really excited when I became a summer camp counselor for the first time when I was 17. I was confident I would really thrive in that authoritarian environment overseeing all of the children. I had learned the ropes when I was a summer camp kid and I knew how to handle myself at camp. I come from a family of teachers and my dad imparted to me that there are only two important rules when it comes to working with children. First, never let them know when you're afraid or you don't know what's going on. Just pretend like you know what's going on and the kids will believe you. And second, as long as the kids make it home at the end of the day and they're alive and okay, their parents will be happy. <laughs> I was so pumped for my first summer moving up from camper to camp counselor. I would be working at YMCA Camp Moore, a summer camp in southern New Jersey, and a different camp than the one I attended when I was a kid. It was a day camp where the kids were bussed in with just a few special overnights throughout the summer. Known by my campers as Miss Julia, I was a high school senior tasked with overseeing a group of seven-year-old girls. I had a co-counselor named Caitlin <laughs> and a counselor in training named Emily, who had been going to the camp for several years. The first few weeks of camp were pretty smooth. I had everything under control, and a few weeks into camp was the, our first overnight event. It was like a parent-teacher night where the parents come to meet their children's camp counselors for the first time, and then the kids do activities and sleep overnight at the camp. For many kids, especially the seven-year-olds in my group, it would be their first sleepover ever. Now, naive camp counselors tell kids ghost stories and say creepy, spooky things, like talking about the legend of the Jersey Devil, a creature that lives in the woods of the Pine Barrens. <laughs> So then the kids in their group get frightened and they stay up all night, scared out of their minds, and they're unable to sleep. But smart camp counselors, like myself, <laughs> we've been to camp a couple of times, you know that you want to tire those children out as much as possible so they pass out at 7 p.m. That way, instead of dealing with scared campers who stay up all night, you can relax and hang out with your fellow camp counselors, <laughs> chilling in the woods while the other counselors are dealing with their frightened children who want to go home. <laughs> I was ready. The day of the parent visit night and the first camp sleepover arrived, and I was prepared to run my little campers into the ground to tucker them out. It was a sweltering, hot summer day, and my group had a dodgeball tournament, we played flag football, and then I decided to take these campers out on a long, arduous hike in the woods. <laughs> this would ensure that by the time I met my camper's parents, those seven-year-olds would be pooped and then go to sleep immediately at their first ever sleepover. And they're not even thinking about being homesick or haunted by ghost stories or the infamous Jersey Devil. <laughs> <laughs> Since this was a different camp than the one I went to as a kid, I was not familiar with this region of the South Jersey Pine Barrens. However, our counselor in training, Emily, had been going to camp for several years and knew some of the trails in the woods. So my co-counselor and I entrusted her with leading us on a hike. All we had to do was follow the spray-painted trees marked red, blue, or another color, and Emily assured us we'd be fine. We picked a trail and headed out in the heat and humidity into the woods relying on our counselor in training and the spray-painted tagged trees to lead the way. After walking for 20 minutes or so, I start to have a feeling we may not know where we're going. We're following red tagged trees, and I see the spray paint is on too many of the trees, not leading us on one clear trail, and it just doesn't really make sense. Then, in the distance, I hear the rumbling sound of ATVs, for those of you who are unaware, the Jersey Devil isn't the only thing that lives in the woods of the Pine Barrens of Southern New Jersey. Um, apparently ATV gangs are roaming out there as well. I don't know whether they're dangerous or just having fun, but I don't really want to find out. It dawns on me that these ATVers have re-tagged the trees for their racing trails through the woods, and we don't know what hike we've been following all this time. We are officially lost in the woods. I'm hearing my dad's voice in the back of my head. 
don't let the kids know that you don't know what's happening. <laughs> and as long as everyone gets back to their parents alive, things are going to be okay. So I pretend like I'm totally aware which trails we're taking, and which direction we're going in, and my coworkers mirror my behavior and play it cool too. We keep walking into the woods and we try to move away from the ATV sounds which rumble nearby, but eventually farther in the distance, as we continue on this hike that's becoming way longer than initially expected. As the hike wears on and the kids start getting thirsty, I'm looking how much water Caitlin and I have in our backpacks for the 20 or so children with us, and we start playing this game of who can take the smallest sip of water out of my water bottle? <laughs> it gets bleak fast. I'm telling a group of seven-year-olds that it's a fun game to see how little water you can drink and who can compete over being the least hungry. <laughs> I'm acting like I have it together and the girls don't seem to think anything's off, but inside I'm freaking out. I'm mentally obsessing over every outcome imaginable. Will I get fired? Will we even survive? Is anyone looking for us? We keep walking, and a few of the girls mention they have to pee, and I don't know how that's possible with so little water available, <laughs> and how much we've been sweating in the summer heat and humidity. I don't know what to do with them. I don't want 20 kids to scatter and get even more lost in the woods where I can't see them all. So I tell them that the next step of the game is Everyone has to form a circle, like find a radius where I can see you, and then you have to pee somewhere visibly near the camp counselors. I refuse, I refuse to lose any of these children if they start squatting behind trees and bushes and rocks. Like my dad said, losing a child is not an option. So I tell the campers today is a special day and we're playing a game and you can just pee wherever you want. <laughs> They're all in these one-piece bathing suits under their camp clothes, and the girls start stripping down, and they're peeing on everything. They're trying to pee on trees and on rocks, and they're trying to direct where they're peeing, and they think it's really, really funny. And all the while, Caitlin and I exchange gla glances, and I'm thinking, wow, there are so many things in the camp counselor training um, they said not to do here, and this is something we definitely shouldn't be doing. The girls are getting a kick out of it. I'm pretending it's fun and silly, while inside I continue spiraling because I have this brick Nokia cell phone with no reception, and it's a ticking clock to when the parent counselor event happens tonight, and I meet these moms and dads, if we make it back at all, while I'm watching their kids laughing and peeing everywhere in what could be our final hours. <laughs> we continue walking, and we're not seeing any tag trees anymore. We've gone as far into the Pine Barrens as we can get, and now it's time for the saddest game, the sing-along, which is really just a cry for help. Yeah. I say, okay kids, how long can you sing that Gwen Stefani, this ish is banana song at the top of your lungs? The girls are belting it out and having a ball. I am dehydrated, shaken, at the end of my rope, thinking, <laughs> this ish is indeed bananas. <laughs> I'm hoping someone will hear us and save us. 45 minutes into the sing-along, someone from the camp finally did find us. Benji, a camp director with a walkie-talkie and a red camp t-shirt signifying his senior rank. Under it, a lower back tattoo of the Star Trek Vulcan salute, <laughs> only visible during afternoons on the lake. We marched out of the woods, looking muddy, overheated, and sweaty. A few hours later, it's time for the parent counselor night. I've rinsed off in the camp showers and put on my best lime green camp t-shirt. I'm waiting to meet the moms and dads who are going to have me fired over what went, went down that day. But surprisingly, parents keep coming up to me and saying, oh my gosh, my little girl says Miss Julia is the most fun person at camp. <laughs> And they said you got the lost in the woods today, but you just tried to make it really fun that you didn't have any idea what you were doing. <laughs> so these little kids called me out hardcore to their parents, but that second lesson my dad taught me was true. As long as the kids live, it's fine. The parents didn't care that their kids were lost, just that they had a good time at camp and made it out okay. 
After that, the summer's a blur. We keep playing dodgeball and flag football, but now we take way, way shorter hikes. <laughs> and even though I once had a group of 20 children visibly peeing on and about each other <laughs> in an ATV-ridden forest with no supplies, there was a happy ending because somehow I was crowned counselor of the year that year. I can't. <laughs> Thank you very much. Julia Lechner.